So good morning or afternoon or evening, depending on what time of day you are listening to this interview. But I am utterly delighted to be joined today by a really lovely woman called Holly Johnson Underwood, who um, has been a member of the Facebook group since maybe pretty much as soon as I started it back in June 2020. And um, Holly is here to kind of share her journey with us and essentially her recovery story. Now, I don't know if Holly will describe herself as being 100% recovered yet, but she is so much improved from the last point that I met her that I just felt like it was a story that was worth sharing now before the story's even finished being told. So I'm gonna come to you, Holly, and um, let's hear about that point that we first connected because I think I reached out to you because I'd seen you in the Facebook group and I went, hey, <laughs> do you wanna have a chat? So where were you at at that point, Holly? Um, well, that was actually probably one of my lowest points in my journey. And I think you probably noticed when you reached out. Um, and um, we actually decided to have a Zoom, didn't we? Um, but I felt like at that point, I think it was around March. So I got COVID in March 2020. And I think, I think our um, Zoom was around March 2021, something like that. Yeah, it was a year later, uh, yeah. Yeah, um, so I felt like by that point, I had exhausted all options. Um, I, I'd done endless amounts of research. So throughout my whole journey, I have been looking into all the research, what's going on in my body. I've wanted to kind of understand what's, what's going on in my body. Um, I, was, I was housebound, um, I was using a wheelchair. Um, so I wasn't really getting out and about um, and I'd lost a lot of faith in everything really because everything that I tried would then cause me relapse and I'd end up back in bed and there was only so many times you can keep trying and causing your relapse until you go oh my gosh I can't do it anymore so um, I was so glad when you said let's zoom let's have a zoom and um, because I just, I just felt I didn't know which avenue to go down. Um, I'd explored all my options. I was struggling a lot with um, sensory overload. So even um, to the point of having a light on some days was too much for me. Um, I've got a four-year-old son and I remember quite often saying to my husband, can you take him out the room, please? Because I just could not cope with his noises. Um, and I, that, as a mum, I felt horrible because I could not cope with my own son being near me. But my brain had just gone into overdrive and felt totally overwhelmed. Um, so, yes, we had a Zoom and it came at the, just the right time for me. Mm. Um, well, I can remember in that conversation, Holly, if it's okay, you know, for us to sort of share that with others that, you know, the thing that struck me when we talked was you, you've become obviously, you know, and, and listening to your story of, of, of how ill you've become, you were sort of stuck mentally in the room when the paramedics came. Mm back in March 2020 or, or you know whichever point they actually turned up for you um, and that they told you how ill you were and I remember you saying that it was those words that were just literally going around and around in your mind and because you know help really wasn't available to us at that point you were left with those words in your head after you'd been discharged because tell me what happened when they came did they did they take you in I don't remember the details now they did didn't they yeah, so um, they turned up and had a listen to, to my breathing. Um, you could see the panic in their um, faces when they heard my breathing. So they quickly um, whacked a nebulizer um, on me and my um, blood pressure got dangerously low as well. Um, so they, um, they put um, an IV drip in me and um, administered some medication. Um, but yes, yeah, so they, they basically said they needed to take me to hospital. Um, bearing in mind, this was kind of right at the start of the pandemic. So 
we still didn't know enough about COVID. So they actually thought because of the way my body was reacting and shutting down, they thought it might be possible sepsis. Oh um, so they basically said to my husband, it, it, it could be possible sepsis. And we don't know if we're too late. Um, so it was very traumatic for me, but also my husband as well um, to hear that. Uh, so they wanted to get me to hospital as soon as possible. So I was blue lighted off to hospital. Um, what did and, they find when you were there? Um, when I was there, by that point, my, my blood pressure had gone back to the norm. My vitals were all normal. So by the point I got to the hospital, things had calmed. They did keep me in um, overnight to monitor everything and they still wanted to ensure my breathing was kind of um, back to where they were happy. Um, and then they kind of sent me off back home with um, strong inhaler, antibiotics and steroids. Um, so essentially, you know, a fairly standard set of, well, here's a couple of things we're just going to throw at you. There's nothing significant that we can find. You've not got clots in your lungs. You're one of those many, many, many that we don't really know what to do with you because we can't find anything. But what we know is at that point, you know, that point wasn't the point that you started to get better. Essentially, that was the point where you just deteriorated, wasn't it? Yeah. And as you say, you know, by March 2021, you were, you'd been in a wheelchair, you were stuck. And actually it was, we sort of discovered in conversation, it was the trauma of that experience mm. that had set your autonomic nervous system into a massive sort of shutdown response. You know, that fight, flight, freeze was really in, in your system and there was nothing that you could do. So any sort of movement, as you were saying, any noises, anything, anything, was making your body go, I can't cope, I can't cope, I can't cope. Yeah. And we had that conversation around, you know, that was going to be one of the first things that you needed to look at. So do you remember what, what was the kind of takeaway from our conversation? Do you know, the one thing that I really, I really kind of remember is the fact that you gave me a, like, almost a renewed faith in myself and my body again. I felt like I just lost total confidence in my body. And you kind of reminded me that actually I am in control still. I can still control my body. And, I, you know, I'm not on my own. Um, and it was just, it was so nice. It was so welcomed. Um, we had a little, I do remember we had a little chat about the autonomic nervous system because at that point, I was thinking um, it was something to do with my nervous system. However, obviously there isn't, wasn't enough research out and everything. So it was just kind of, oh, is it this sort of thing? Um, so it was nice to be able to have that chat with you and discuss the fight and flight um, path that I felt like I was really kind of stuck in. Um, and um, we also, I do remember we also discussed acupuncture as well. Um, and you kind of gave me that push to kind of go towards ch ch using acupuncture. Um, it was we, were just, just, we were trying to help you not give up, weren't we? Yes. I, mean, I remember that was the whole essence of the conversation. It's like, you know what? There are things that you can do. Don't surrender to this because it will mm. take you under. And it had already, you know. So for me, I just wanted to leave you with that sense of hope that there was something else that you could try. And my own experience with acupuncture had been quite positive and so yes off you went and you you tr you had a couple of sessions didn't you I did yeah I'm, I am still doing acupuncture now right. um yeah so um I do think that's been a huge huge help um but you're right it was just kind of that sense of come on pick yourself up let's let's start again there you know there is hope um and I just I really needed that at that point because I, I couldn't be a mum to my son, I couldn't be a wife, I couldn't be Holly, and I just felt like I totally lost all sense of purpose, and I did feel like this long Covid battle was winning, winning, and um, 
so yes I the kind of the chat with you from you just made me feel like actually this is my body I am still in control and um it was just yeah it was wonderful it really gave me that boost I needed Oh, it's so lovely to hear you say that because, you know, obviously every now and again, I check in with people and, you know, yours was a story that I just thought, my goodness, if there's anything that we can do to help this woman, because she has this little kid and she has a life, she's young, you know, let's not let her give up hope. And I think, you know, I would love for anyone that was listening to this, who was having a really, really dark and difficult time with it, you know, our, our brains need hope. And sometimes we don't know how to find it, but I would say just seek it wherever you can, because actually I think it's a fundamental chemical to kind of add into the immune system. You know, we need that sense of hope. We are naturally, as a species, people that will go off and seek remedy, seek cure, seek information. And I think, you know, you'd been doing that for a year and you'd just worn yourself out. And mm. then when that despair kicks in, we're incredibly disempowered and it's not a powerful place to ask your body to recover from. And so shifting back into a place of hope is really, really fundamental to creating a landscape for recovery. So, you know, to hear you talk about that, that, that was a kind of really interesting turning point for you is really, it's really lovely to hear. So what happened then? Because of course that's not been the end of your journey. You've, you've been, you know, on quite a long and protracted journey back to health. So what was, you, you had started to have the acupuncture and what else? So the trauma, you know, you still had the trauma going around in your mind. Those words that the paramedic had said, they were like spray painted on your walls almost, weren't they? Everywhere you yeah. went. Well, I think um, we said in the Zoom, actually, I felt like there was a there was a bear in the corner of my room yeah. and I was just petrified of everything. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, it really had kind of caused me quite a lot of trauma. So, um I did go through um, having CBT with a counsellor um, and that was actually brilliant. Um, she, um, I still speak to her now once a month just to stay on top of things, but um, she was absolutely brilliant. She taught me through it all, even to the point of kind of we, um, when, when I started getting out and about, I started seeing ambulances around every time they go past. I start to feel panicked and stressed because it brought me back to that night that I got rushed in so we've worked on that so now I can't I see an ambulance and I'm I'm fine it, it doesn't take me back to that day um and she yes yeah, she's just been amazing she's really worked through a lot of the trauma that I had kind of inside me um I remember a while back I was watching a film with my husband and um part of the film um, the the woman was rushed into the hospital and she got pushed through the A&E department doors and I just turned to my husband I said I can't watch it anymore because I had just it just brought me back to that time I was rushed through there with possible sepsis and um it it was just horrific so we we've worked quite hard on the CBT and it's really massively helped for sure. I'm such an advocate for, you know, I just for, for working on your mental health around all of this because we just don't have physical health as well. Mental health isn't in the right space. Uh, it's a bit like we were just saying about creating that environment for the body to do what it needs to do. You know, the mind and the body are not two separate things. And so if this bit is really caught up in something that's holding it stuck, you know, which you really were being held stuck by this really, really upsetting experience that you'd had, your body just could not, your body could not move forwards. You know, that's yeah. really what I felt when we spoke. So that was the piece that was, you know, first of all, acupuncture, and then we very much said, you need to work on this now. Mm -hmm. And it was so great to kind of watch you going along that journey and going, right, I'm, I've had some acupuncture, now I'm going to go and do some CBT. Oh, and it's making a difference, you know, and I think it doesn't make a difference overnight, does it? You know, so yeah, talk to yeah. us about the amount of time that it's taken to kind of unpick a lot of this. So um, I've actually, well, I started acupuncture April 2020, yeah. um, 2021, sorry. Yeah. Um, so it's been a year, a good year of me doing acupuncture, me being on the, um, I 
went on to antihistamines as well and they've made um they've made a big difference for me um so it's been a year of doing doing these things and actually it's not a, it isn't a quick fix at all you do have to kind of be patient and you know let it run its course but um it's it is um you just got to remember that it will get better there is a light at the end of the tunnel some 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 of us our tunnels are a little bit longer than others and that's fine but there's still that light at the end of the tunnel um, and for me, actually, what really helped me was speaking to you and seeing that you have progressed and you are getting better because I was also petrified that this was my life, my new life, it would be permanent. Um, and that was a really big sort of worry for me because of having our young, young um, son. I was thinking, how am I going to care for him and all of this? Um, so seeing you and the fact that you're progressing so well gave me hope in the fact that actually there is that light at the end of the tunnel and I will get there. Well, it's so nice to hear you say that because I think, you know, one of the things that we really do need to tap into is, you know, especially when we're in that place of feeling stuck and lost is a sense of hope. Um, and, you know, I, I think one of the things that the Facebook group that, you know, I set up is all about is is hopefully creating a space where people can be inspired by other people mm -hmm. um i know quite a lot of people who have recovered who do stick around and offer their stories to people because they have, themselves have really been changed by by other people's stories of recovery because we do need hope mm -hmm. um, again you know it, it's just a part of creating the right landscape mentally and physically for our own bodies to kind of come down and to settle and to readjust and to become you know a body that we can inhabit again um and so you know it's so great to hear you say that just by talking to me and seeing that i'd recovered to a point where i was then working you know a bit uh, at that point um it, it's really inspiring because and i hope there's other people that listen to this and think oh okay so maybe i'm gonna start searching out stories of recovery more and you know i think one of the things that can happen is people can watch a story of recovery or they can listen or read about someone else's and go oh well, they weren't as ill as me mm. so so therefore this story isn't valid as a piece mm -hmm. of information or evidence and what i want to say and the reason why i've reached out to holly was holly was really ill like worryingly ill from someone that didn't even know holly <laughs> I'd been watching Holly's comments in the Facebook group. And this was obviously when the group was smaller and I could kind of keep a track of, of a lot of what was going on, not, not everything, but a lot. And certain people began to worry me that they would slip through a net and, you know, something pretty terrible would happen. And so, um, yeah, I think I'm telling you that because I want you to know that Holly was one of the really, really, really poorly people that, you know, was, was causing huge concern. There's a lot of people that are really affected by this, but that manage to have bits and pieces of their day or bits and pieces of their week, perhaps, where they are able to perhaps go out, uh, you know, maybe to walk the dog once or, but Holly was absolutely in a dark room and, you know, wheelchair bound and the nervous system had been so damaged. Everything was impossible to tolerate, wasn't it? It was. I re I. I do remember actually um, a good friend of mine. Um, I've had um, so many lows in this in this um, journey, but I there is one quote that my friend said to me that really stuck with me every time I had a low. Is um, she'd say she would say, "Don't sink. Keep your head above that water and just keep on swimming." And it really stuck with me. And every time I kind of felt my mental health going down i would always say that quote to myself come on let's keep swimming let's keep going keep our head just above that water um and um it, it is so true because it's just the long covid journey everyone's journey is so different but it it's just so varied and the mental health aspect of it is just it's a really really tough journey for everyone and you've got to have that sense of positivity to keep yourself going and also you know 
it's it's lovely to be able to have someone there that can help you when you when you're struggling like I was that can kind of say look come on let's get you going again just like you did for me because um I really was in a really low place when I spoke to you so my goodness you were so just tell us a little bit about how you are now. So, you know, obviously it's almost a year since we had that initial conversation and we've we've tracked each other a little bit over the months since, but like, how is it different now to how it was just a year ago? Wow. So, well, so now I'm up, I'm dressed. Um, <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, I'm actually sitting on a chair. Um, yes. So I used to, I, I had to be propped up in the bed. I couldn't even sit on a chair. I didn't have the strength in my body to sit on a chair. So yeah, I'm doing that. I'm doing the school run with my, with my son oh, now, wow. driving. Um, oh, I've done so many things recently. And what I have actually done is I've, I've bought myself a book and every progress that I do, I'm writing it down. So then I can go back to it later on and just realize kind of how lucky I am to drive a car, how lucky I am to kind of sit at a table and eat a meal with my family now. Um, and it's really lovely to kind of read through all the progress that I've, I've made I mean, a couple of months ago, I could socialize for 30 minutes and then that would be it. I'd be totally overwhelmed. Now I can do half half a day and I'm I'm OK. So it's it's just so lovely. I would recommend right, having a little book and write in your progress because sometimes they're so small, yeah. but they're huge to you when you look back. Um, well, also, if we're not tracking, we forget, you know, and I don't know about you, but we forget how bad it was. The, the brain doesn't like to hang on to the details of those dark moments too much once you've moved out of them. And so you look back and you go, well, I can't really remember. You know, people say to me, well, do you remember, or so my husband would say, oh, do you remember when you were so ill that you didn't, you know, you couldn't walk to the bathroom for two weeks? And I went, no. Yeah. <laughs> Well, how did I get there? Well, it, it, I carried you, he said. Oh, did you? And, you know, it's just, it's gone because the brain goes, you don't need that. Let's get rid of that. Yeah. And so actually being able to track, you know, today I could hold a cup and drink from it myself. You know, you otherwise you'd forget that there was ever a point where you couldn't do that. Yeah, it's, it's funny true. you say that actually, because um, uh, last week my husband turned to me and he we were saying how far I've come. And um, he actually said, do you remember when I had to carry you to the toilet? You were that poorly. So we had a very similar conversation. Um, and he also he also said, do you remember when you couldn't tolerate um, Luca in the room with you as well? So, yeah, we were we were looking back. But I don't I have seem to have blocked that out. I'm like you. It's it's gone. That right. I wasn't that ill, surely. Right. <laughs> It doesn't serve us to hold on to it, you know, no. and, and I think it's 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 a very useful thing that the brain goes, thanks very much. We, we don't need to revisit that one too much. But in some ways, you know, what you've done with your kind of your progress chart is essentially keep a track of the, the tiny wins because they all add up to a massively important set of steps that you took on your journey. Mm. Let me just ask you. You know, for those people that are listening to this, what like pieces of advice would would you be able to offer from the perspective now of someone that can sit in her own chair and take herself to the toilet? <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, what I would say is just believe in yourself and believe in your body. Don't lose that faith. Um, you at the end of the day you are still in control it's your body don't let your body make you think anything different so you are still in control um, everyone's journey is is very different so um, find what works for you and what works for your body um, so I I always say it's the missing piece so the last three or four months my progress has just been incredible and um, for me I found the missing piece for my long COVID and it's just my progress has just been amazing so 
I, I always think there is a missing piece in everyone's recovery. Find that missing piece for your journey and you can, you can do it. There is a light at the end of that tunnel and just believe in yourself and believe in your body. Can we ask you what your missing piece was? Um, my missing piece was the, um, so I've been following a um, protocol called the NemiCheck protocol. Um, it's by a doctor, it's a doctor in America actually, in the USA, um, he's called Dr. Nemichek. And he's actually, a, he specializes in the vagus nerve stimulation um, and inflammation in your nervous system. So I've been loosely following his protocol. He actually has a protocol. Um, I've been loosely following his protocol and it is basically a very strict anti-inflammatory diet. Um, and I have been really strict. I've pretty much followed a keto diet, yeah. um, but I've added carbohydrates in. Um, um, I have high dose of fish oil um, to help with the anti-inflammatory. And then um, the other thing is vagus nerve stimulation. So I've been really kind of following that. So I, for my journey, I have very much been focusing on the inflammation in my nervous system. Um, getting rid of that inflammation and then calming it all down. Absolutely. And, you know, listening to you talking about that, you're doing it from all of the methods, you know, that, that are available as in, you know, the therapy to work on the trauma, which is going to reduce inflammation in the body. You've been doing acupuncture, which has been working to reduce, you've been doing the yeah. diet, working to, you've been doing vagus <laughs> nerve exercises to reduce. So, you know, you've gone at it all kind of, you know, aspects covered. And I'm so, so impressed to hear you talking about your journey in this way with such positivity now. Let me just finish on one question then with you, Holly, is how has this changed you? And this is an interesting question because not everyone wants to think that they've been changed, but we are all changed by this mm. kind of journey. What has it taught you that you think you'll take with you forever? Do you know, it's, it's made me realise how strong I am as a person. I never, I never sort of thought I was, um, you know, this very strong mentally and physically, but um, it, it has made me realise how strong I am. And it's also made me realise kind of um, how much of a problem solver I am, because throughout the whole two years, um, I didn't stop looking at research. I researched and researched because there was a problem that I needed to solve. Yeah. And so, yeah, I guess I, I, I found out that I'm a bit of a problem solver. <laughs> and I would not stop until I found, found that out. But um, I, I like to turn everything into a positive. Any sort of experience you have, I always think it's, it's nice to turn it into a positive. So, I've actually turned my journey now. It was horrible, but it I've turned it into a positive. I now realise how lucky I am to be able to spend time with my son again, how lucky I am to be able to socialise again. Um, and it just makes you realise kind of how lucky you are to do those small things in life um, and, and not it cause you a relapse or anything. Um, I also am going to take from this and try and see if I can help others. So that's why I kind of accepted to do this, because I thought, actually, if my journey is going to help others um, with any ideas on what they want to try, on ideas on how to approach their journey, then actually I'll turn it into a positive and it's worthwhile. Absolutely. Holly, I can only imagine that anyone watching this who's who's gone through half of what you've gone through will be going, my goodness, you know, if Holly can do it, we can all do it. Yeah, Oh, <laughs> well, exactly. I'm, no, I'm not anyone special. And at the end of the day. Well, I um, would challenge that bit right there. I'm not anyone <laughs> special. Uh, let's just reframe that, please. I'm an extraordinarily special person, says oh. Holly Johnson Underwood. <laughs> Yeah, but just carry on fighting and there is that light right at the end of the tunnel. Amazing. And it's worth it. It is worth it. And all I'm going to say is look at her face. She's smiling and she looks yes. glowing and full of the joy of life, which is a very, very different face to the one that I met in a little ghostly Zoom a year ago. 
So Holly, I'm just going to ask you to stay there and I'll say goodbye to everyone. So folks, I'm going to try and do as many of these recovery stories as possible, just to cover as many different types of recovery story as there are out there. Uh, because you don't have to do an expensive program. You don't have to follow a, you know, a particularly complex protocol. She's had a fairly simple set of things that she's been working on. And, you know, as, as she said, she's kind of found the missing key and that's been her route out. Um, hopefully it's allowed you to sit back and reflect and take a little bit more inspiration to, to not stay too long in those dark days where we kind of feel hope lost. Uh, hopefully today is about kind of checking in with the fact that recovery for so many of us is possible. So we're going to say goodbye until the next one. Thanks, Holly. Lots of Thank love. Thank you. <laughs>